Hey guys, thanks for watching Cheap Shot. Today is going to be part two of our three part series, 3D printing for beginners. We're going to use Cura to slice our STL model of our kitty cat to actually turn that into code for our 3D printer. We're going to use Ender 3 today as an example. So what we want to come in here is it's going to pop up when you start it for the first time, but we want to add a non-network printer. We're going to use, we're going to say we're going to use the Creality Ender 3 Pro. And when we hit add, it's going to come up with all the information for our printer that we already have. It just knows our X, our Y, our Z, and knows what type of build plate we have. And then it's going to do some start G code and end G code for the beginning of our print and for the end of our print. This is the default stuff that ships with Cura, so you, or not Cura, but with your Ender 3, so you don't really need to worry about that. Hit next, and we're all set to go. We can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out of our build plate. We can hold the right button, move around hold the middle mouse wheel, pan a little bit. It's very self-explanatory. But we want to import a model, so we're going to come up here to this little button, and we're going to find our STL. And boom, there's our cute little kitty cat, cute as a day. We have some issues though. We don't want to print him in this orientation, and that's because all of this is going to need support as well as up here, and we don't want to do that. So a couple things we can do is we can click on our model, we can come over here to rotate and we can drag these different things to bring them back and forth. If we wanted to spin it and whatnot, we can do that. Um, but we can also click select a face to align to build plate and we can just click on his feet and boom, now he's standing upright. We can come over here to move or press T and we can slide him anywhere we want. We're just going to put him right there in the center of your build plate. As you learn your 3D printer a little bit more, there may be sweet spots in your build plate where it's level, where it's more flat than another spot. So before I upgraded to a glass bed, I had to print everything right there. If it wasn't a big piece that I needed to, I would print everything in that lower right left hand corner and uh, that was my sweet spot. So if you're trying everything, it's just not sticking, you're having a bad time, you know, try maybe a different area. You can also click on him, we can also go zero, zero, we can get him exactly centered but that's fine. Um, it's gonna ask you what type of nozzle you're gonna do. We're gonna be using PLA and we're gonna be using a 0.4 nozzle. Naturally, if you're changing it, you wanna change your nozzle size. Remember, if you change to another nozzle, when you come back in here, uh, it's changed, so don't forget that. And then over here, we have our, um, our basic print settings, all right? This just keeps it super simple. It's, you know, how much, how good of quality do you want it? Do you want a very fine quality? Do you want it not very fine quality? How much infill do you want? So uh, let's say we're gonna do middle of the row, which is 0.16, we're gonna do 20% infill, um, gradual infill. That's a nice thing, you can do that. It's up to you. Um, support, adhesion, we're just gonna slice this, see what it says. So once we hit slice, it's gonna take a second, and we come over to preview and we can see what we got. Um, some of you may have a feature feature enabled where it slices as you're doing things. I hate that. Um, it's somewhere in the settings. You can slice automatically, disable that. I hate that because anytime you make a little change, it starts slicing. It just takes forever. But so here we got our little guy and we can use this tab on the side and we see we have 454 layers. We can drag this up and down and we can actually see how it plans on building it. You know, the very first layer, it's going to come down here and build a brim then it's going to start filling in our tail and our feet and then it's going to move up one and it's going to do that all the way up it's always good even if you think you're a pro to come in here and just quickly check it just to make sure everything looks right um, and, and this is very great if you know if you're a beginner if you're doing some simple stuff using those simple tools will we'll, we'll get you far um, we can see here a gradual infill where as we go up it gets more dense. I've never really used that. I don't really have a need to. I probably will in the future. Um, and we have support, but I don't really like these. I like to get into the nitty gritty, the custom stuff. There's a lot of options I'm about to show you. If they're, if you're scared of something and touch it, just give it a quick Google. Most of these are options that are affected by other options, so you don't really need to think about it too hard. It probably won't affect you. But we're going to come here to custom. And this is what I like to use. I like to stick with dynamic quality. And I'm gonna kind of go through some of the settings that I use to kind of uh, 
help you show. So we have our layer thickness, right? Layer height 0.16, perfectly acceptable. That's very standard. Walk thickness is how thick our walls are. And that is gonna be a multiple of our nozzle. So if our nozzle is 0.4 and we have three walls, naturally it's 1.2. We can bump up our wall count and slice. And it'll still keep that at 1.2, but one thing you need to recognize is that it's gonna kind of half-ass some other things. So you wanna kind of keep it multiples. I normally like to stick around um, for a part that I need that's super strong. I use four walls. For a part that's just gonna be decorative, I may use two walls. Um, three is the standard. I keep my top layers and bottom layers as a multiple of those. So for example, this one has six bottom layers. That's just excessive. That means that it's gonna take and just do this 100% infill until it gets to layer seven. And that's when it's gonna start doing our actual infill that we set. Like I said, you don't really need a lot of infill. Your strength comes from wall counts, not from infill. Your infill, the thing that you need to think about most for your infill, infill is top layers. So for example, if I come up with my kitty cat and I've got this section right here where it starts to cap off his head. If I don't have um, enough material there, it could sag a little bit or it could look ugly. And you know, I can take and negate that a little bit by having more layers. The top layer will sag, the next layer won't sag as much, and by the time it gets to you know, three or four layers, it looks great. But that is the big thing that you need to be keeping an eye out for your infill it does not matter for strength it matters a little bit but not as much as people think your strength comes from your walls infill you have infill density so right here this is 20 right 10 it's gonna be a lot more dense or a lot less dense I'm sorry you can come all the way up to 80 which is just excessive really anything higher than like 25% is just excessive you have bigger issues like look it almost looks like you can't see anything you can use different infill patterns search online figure out what each of them look like most people either stick with gyroid and they stick with gyroid because you can get away with using um, a little bit less infill percentage the issue is it kind of sometimes takes a while to print um, it also makes very large G codes as we can see it's got a lot of these waves the standard is pretty much cubic subdivision. It's gonna kinda make these squares that are kinda gonna move up as the print moves around. And they're gonna kinda cap off and whatnot. Gyroid and cubic subdivision, those are gonna be um, your most popular ones. Um, I don't recommend lines, I don't recommend grids, just because the strength that you do have with infill um, is not gonna get, it's just not gonna be there. We can see how our infill changes our time. Look down here, we have an estimated time of six hours and 35 minutes. If we were to switch to gyroid, we got six hours and 41 minutes. You can hover over this eye and it'll tell you exactly what's taking all the amount of time. So we're gonna stick with gyroid 10%. Our printing temperature, that's gonna be up to you and the material you're using. I'm using PLA, mine likes to print at 200. If you're noticing issues, you may wanna adjust it build prey temperature, that depends a lot on you. We're gonna go in and we're gonna look at some um, advanced settings in a little bit in regards to that. So print speed, same thing, it depends on your printer. 50 is pretty standard. If you talk to someone, over 50 they're printing a little fast, under 50 they're printing slow, it depends on your setup. I print at around 65 um, millimeters a second. I think that is very standard. It prints fine with me. Some things, like I said, you know, there's a lot of things going on they kind of have to think about is if you have lots of bridging, a lot of people think you want to slow your print down. I disagree with that. I think you want to speed your print up to be able to get across that bridge faster. We have some things, retraction. You don't really need to mess around with that unless you're having oozing issues. We have cooling. We want our part to be cooling, we want 100%. If you're using another material like ABS, you may want to change that, PLA, we don't need to. Uh, we have another thing, generate support. So let's look at this a little bit. If I click generate support, I have a couple other options that show up. Everywhere, overhang intensity. 
So everywhere is anywhere it thinks that it needs support, where the overhang is more than 51 degrees, it's gonna add support in there. So we can see that it added some support down here. You can see that right there. And surprisingly, it didn't add any um, under the tail, but you can change that overhang angle. You know, a good thing to start off with is 46 degrees and go from there to see what your printer can do. Um, you can do everywhere or touching build plate. So we can see with everywhere it had it under our kitty cat's neck, touching build plate that naturally isn't touching the build plate. It won't build it there. With this kitty cat though, we don't need any support. So we're just gonna uncheck that. We don't need it. And then build plate adhesion type. Um, skirt is what I stick with. It just makes sure everything's looking good as it starts off. Um, you can also do uh, what's called a brim. And a brim is where you're, if you're doing like a high risk part that you think it might come up, what it's gonna do is it's gonna print lots of lines around the base of your print, just kind of help it stick down. Or you can do raft where it's actually gonna build a platform for your print to stick up on. Um, I generally don't like raft. It leaves some imperfections on the bottom that you can adjust, but it, it just takes forever. And I generally don't like it. But there's some uses where you'll, you'll need it. But for this, we can just stick with the skirt. So let's go back through and look at these settings for a kitty cat. Wear height 1.165, or sorry, 0.16, perfectly fine. Our wall lines, we don't need a bunch. Let's gonna go, we're gonna go three. Top layers, don't need a lot. We're gonna go three for those. We'll slice it, we'll figure out how long this takes. Four hours, 14 minutes. Infill, let's check that. Infill looks fine, I could probably Let's use, I like to stick with the gyroid. I just like it, it looks good. But I'm gonna drop that down to maybe 8%. I'm probably gonna save like two, three minutes. Oh, what do you know, I saved about 20. That's fine. 200, 60 degrees C, print speed 65. We want to, we want to uh, enable retraction. Z-hop when retracted, we can set that. That just basically means that um, um, if like our filament is coming up in the tube, we want to make sure that we're up above the print. We're going to have to hit slice again. Got no support, don't need it. We got a skirt. Looking down, everything looks good. It should be able to print this angle just fine. We should have no problems. These right here are going to be some bridges. That'll print just fine. And from here, we can save to a, a file, we can save to our SD card, we can save to anything we want. If we're using Octoprint, we can send it directly to Octoprint. That'll work fine. So this is the G code that I'm gonna use for when we actually print this. Um, but we're gonna look at a few other things extra. If we come over here to this tab right here, we can, uh, we can manage setting visibility and we can look at a couple different other things um, that are gonna be very beneficial to us. Not that's necessarily necessary, but it'll definitely help us a lot. I like to also look at, let's see here. I say this now that I, I like to look at Z seam alignment and position, corner preference. There's ironing. I like to look at also, Printing temperature initial layer. Flow. We're looking for initial layer speed. Mm -hmm. And initial fan speed. Yeah, so let's look at those. So we come through here, Z seam alignment. So this is gonna be where our print starts and stops. It's gonna help you prevent what's called zits, which is a little dot inside on the outside of your print from where it started. So if I play this layer, 
we can see that it's starting right here in this corner. And then when it starts this next one, it starts right here. So, because we have this set up to back and smart hiding. You could set it to random if you were going to do like a sphere. You could set it to random, something with a lot of round edges, um, and that you can sand away. But it's mostly for me, it's mostly that you just want to kind of do, you know, smart hiding, and then you want to set it to like the sharpest corner or something. That's going to be great for this print because we have a lot of those sharp corners. It's going to basically analyze each corner of our print, and it's going to find whatever the sharpest corner is, and it's going to start there. So that way our seam is up a corner, and it's going to hardly be noticeable. This should be good because all of our corners are the same, so it should start at the end of each spot. You see it kind of started here where we got to the eyes. A-okay. I normally just pick a corner and just stick with there. That way, if I do have zits, if I do have a seam, it's one position running up the side of the print. I don't have to worry about where all it is. All right. This one is we have printing temperature initial layer. Um, I like to make my filament a little bit hot when it starts um, and the reason I do that is because I really want that filament to stick that first layer I want to get it very hot and I'm also do initial layer speed you can see it's already changed itself automatic I just like to double check it we want to make sure that that's a lot slower and we want to just make sure that that first layer is nice and slow so it sticks down on our, our bed surface Another thing is that flow. If you realize that you're having a lot of zits, a lot of um, issues with quality, you may want to just flow. That's going to be a part of your calibration steps, which we may talk about a little bit more. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk about is initial fan speed zero. Like I said before, these things are mostly automatic. These are, it pretty much has the settings I would have put in them anyway without me having to pull them up. I just wanted to show you. Initial fan speed, that's going to be our part cooling fan during that initial layer. We want it hot, we want it down there to stick. We're going to make sure that's off. That first layer, our fan is not going to be running. It's not going to turn on until our second layer, at which point it turns on to 100%. So these are just a few other things that you might want to be thinking about while you look up your Cali Cat if you're having issues. This is a very simple print. Those first settings we talked about should be more than enough to get you set through it. Then if you want to get a little bit more advanced, we went through the advanced settings, and then we went through, you know, the quote unquote super advanced settings after that. But those basic ones that pop up, they're going to be fine for you for this application. As you learn a little bit more, play around, Google what each thing does. It's not as uh, daunting as it looks. Like I said, a lot of these print settings change based off of what you've changed before. You don't actually need to change them yourself. So. This Cali Cat, it's going to print great. It's going to be great. We're going to love it. It's going to be great. So our next video, we'll show you how to set up an under three and how to actually print this. Thanks for watching.